Hi everybody, my name is Casey O'Hara and I'm here to introduce you to the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory. This will be the world's largest telescope. It's currently being built at the South Pole and it will allow us to study the universe by looking at neutrinos. Well, your first question might be, just what the heck is a neutrino anyway? Well, it's not a nutria, that's a kind of a rodent. It's not a neutron, and it's not Jimmy Neutron. It's not even something that you've ever even seen in the world before. It's not even what we would consider regular matter. So what do I mean by regular matter? Well, everything we experience every day, such as this pen, this dime, candy bars, you, me, everything is uh, regular matter. It's all made of atoms. So atoms, as you might remember if you were paying attention in chemistry class, are made up of positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons, not the same as a neutrino, that make up the nucleus of the atom. And then electrons with a negative charge uh, go around in an orbit around the nucleus. Now because of these positive and negative charges, there's forces that act between the protons and the electrons to hold the whole atom together. But neutrinos don't act the same way. A neutrino has no electrical charge on it, so therefore no electrical forces act on it. So the neutrino passes right through regular matter, also known as atoms, like it's not even there. So neutrinos pretty much go through everything. Walls, floors, us, the earth, the sun, everything. But this also means they'll go right through any sensor or detector we could ever build. Well, so how can we detect these neutrinos if they just go right through everything? Well, it turns out that sometimes, very rarely, like one chance in a million, billion, 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 a neutrino interacts with an atom. And when that happens, we can detect the bits and pieces that come out of the collision. Okay, so here's an atom. It's made of protons, neutrons, electrons, regular matter. And here comes a neutrino. It hits, and then a new particle pops out, this particle is called a muon. Let's see the instant replay. Neutrino comes in, muon comes out. Now when a muon goes through a clear material, or medium, like glass, water, or ice, it leaves a trail of light behind it like the wake of a speedboat. This is called Cherenkov radiation, and that trail of light tells us about the muon, which then tells us about the neutrino. So now we can detect neutrinos. So how does the ice cube neutrino detector work then? Well, instead of water for our clear material, like they've used in other research projects around the world, our clear material, we're gonna use ice. No, not outer pops. There, that's better. And so where can we find a lot of ice? There we go, the South Pole. All right, here we are at the South Pole. Look around, nothing as far as the eye can see, nothing but ice. And the ice cap here at the South Pole is three kilometers thick. And of course that means it's cold. So it's time to put on a little parka, maybe some gloves. There, that's much better. All right, now we're gonna drill down into the ice. We're gonna drill down to a total depth of about two and a half kilometers. That's about one and a half miles. Next, we're going to place a string of light sensors, starting one and a half kilometers down and extending all the way to the bottom of our hole, a full kilometer. And in this string, we're going to place a total of 60 sensors. But I'm too lazy to draw them all. So what's better than a string of sensors? Lots of strings of sensors. The final project is going to use about 70 strings, each with 60 sensors, for a total of um, lots. I'm definitely going to need a bigger drill. Now using this array of sensors, depending on which sensors are triggered in which order, tells us about the neutrino's direction and the neutrino's energy. Now by studying these neutrinos from out in the universe, we can learn about amazing celestial events like supernovas, black holes, and gamma ray bursts without even having to leave our comfortable home planet. Well, comfortable is a relative term. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little movie. You can find out more information and details at the IceCube website, icecube.wisc.edu. And you can follow my expedition, along with other Arctic and Antarctic expeditions, at www.polartrek.com.